Okay, hello. My name is Hugh Ramis. This is Cooking Up Crime, where I talk about true crime and eat various foods while I do it. So today we have vegetable made fun from a Chinese restaurant that I have previously been to. And we have vegan cookies. Yay. Anyway, good heavens. Today we'll be discussing the mystery of Anastasia Romanov. She was a Romanov, not a Romanov. She was a Russian princess, duchess. We're gonna get into it. So Anastasia was the Grand Duchess Anastasia Nikolvain Nikolaevna of Russia. Sorry, can't do anything because I'm stupid and uncultured. I got it on my leg. Okay, I'm just gonna hope for the best, really. She was born on June 18th of 1901. So her birthday like just passed, good for her. She was the youngest daughter of Tsar Nicholas II and Tsarina Alexandra. Her older siblings were named Olga, Tatiana, and Maria. And they had a younger brother named Alexei. Alexei was kind of like an unfortunate being. He had a lot of health issues. Anastasia and Maria were always like besties. They were just always attached at the hip and they were best friends. Whereas the older ones, Olga and Tatiana, they were like best friends too. Anastasia kind of started off on the wrong foot because when she was born, her entire family was upset that she was a girl. Kind of upsetting. But it was only because they had already had three girls. In order to keep the line going for Tsar Nicholas, they needed a boy. It was reported that before he even saw Anastasia, he had to go take a walk to calm himself down. Kind of upsetting. Some people can't even have kids. You need to chill out, bud. So she was born after the fourth century martyr, Saint Anastasia, who was known as the breaker of chains. In honor of Anastasia being born, Tsar Nicholas actually pardoned and released a couple of students from prison who were, were in prison because they were rioting. Anastasia's name is actually Greek for meaning of the resurrection, which kind of plays into the mystery later on because it was kind of like foreshadowing or so people thought. Anastasia had many nicknames. I'm going to read them because I can't remember them all. Anastasi, Nastia, Nastas, Nastenka, Malenkaya, or Schwipsig, meaning merry little one or little mischief. She was also kind of a brat a little bit. She was known as being energetic and full of life and people really liked her for her charm. She was kind of bratty, but in like a charming way. I don't know if that makes sense, but it does in my brain. She was short and kind of chubby and she had blue eyes and strawberry blonde hair. She didn't really care about school, but she really thrived in acting. But her teachers and her peers, they kind of thought she was a bit blunt, which I guess for the time we weren't supposed to be. It was kind of about pleasing everybody for the sake of saving face, I guess, I have no idea. Moving on to cookies. She was the most misbehaved of her siblings. She would often like trip her, the servants and play tricks on her teachers. She would ref do lighter things like she would just climb up a tree and refuse to come down but then she got a bit hardcore whenever she put a rock and a snowball and threw it at her sister. She was very like a tomboy. She loved games and she was really like cutthroat when it came to them. She like wanted to win. She was really competitive. She also cared less about like her appearance than her sisters did. So she wasn't like girly in that way. She was more of like, I'm gonna beat you up a little bit. So as I said before, her best friend was her sister Maria. They shared a room, they often matched clothing, and they spent a lot of time together. She would get a massage every two weeks because she had a bad back, same. And and she also had bunions on both big toes. And so whenever like it was time for her weekly massage, she would hide underneath the bed and refuse to come out. Or she would just play dead or something. So it was thought that all four sisters were carriers of hemophilia because they bled more than usual. It was thought that they got the condition from their mother. And in 2009, DNA analysis actually did conclude that Alexi, the younger brother, had hemophilia B, which was a more severe form of the disease. It led to his disabilities. Just in like a rundown of genetics, in case you don't know, women, most likely, if it's like an X-linked trait, women have to have two genes to have the disease, whereas men only have to have one. So if the case that the women had all the sisters had one gene, they would be carriers and have lighter forms of the condition, and the son would have just need the one to have the actual condition. It was important to the Tsar and his wife to raise the kids simply. They had to clean their own rooms, they slept on cots without pillows, and they sold their needlework at charity events, and they took cold baths, which I didn't think they had hot water back then anyway. What do I know? Let's get into Gr Grigory Rasputin. If you're familiar with the Anastasia movie, you know very well. His role was fictionalized in the movies. He was a holy man, and the mother trusted him very much, and she claimed that he had saved their family a lot of times. 
It was also said that all the kids loved him and they treated him as like almost like an uncle figure or like a like a family friend. And kind of like this time, they had nurseries which weren't for babies. It was kind of like, I don't know, a nursery in Peter Pan was like where they all slept. But in the way that this was described, in the way that this was described, a nursery seemed to be like almost like a living room where the kids could like stay. Or like a toy room, I guess. And Rasputin was allowed in there. But it was kind of controversial because the girls would be only in their nightgowns, which you couldn't see a girl in their nightgown apparently. One of the governors has actually complained about Rasputin being in the nursery and the Tsar forbid him from ever entering again. So it was kind of upsetting. She was later fired. I don't know if, I don't know why, but she ended up telling their whole family about how he was allowed in the nursery, but there was no evidence that it was anything cynical, that he was in the nursery or anything like wrong. It just seemed to be that he, from what I read, it seemed that he was literally just like there to care for them as children. He wasn't there to abuse them or anything. So that was nice. The family was noted to be very protective of Rasputin and they protected him, almost like one of their own. And there were claims that he had raped another governess, but the family disputed the claims. And it was also kind of rumored that Rasputin was trying to get with the mom and the four girls, which was weird, but like not weird because of the time period and they were kind of like teenagers. It was, it's an odd time. The early 1900s was an odd time. The early anything was an odd time. Now is an odd time. Yeah, get with it. The family never thought anything bad about Rasputin, but they ended up asking him to leave and he went on a pilgrimage to Palestine and they actually publicly liked him and thought well of him up until his death in 1916 when he was murdered. And after his murder, the girls actually entered kind of a depression about his death. So that's very sad. During World War One, the girls ended up visiting a hospital where the older sisters would be nurses to the soldiers, but Anastasia was too young to be a nurse, so she would just play games with the wounded soldiers. In 1917, there was a Russian revolution between the royal, fam the royal family and the Bolsheviks. On March 15th of 1917, Tsar Nicholas actually denounced his throne, and, and the family was taken in captivity by the Bolsheviks, where they were moved to Siberia. The family was eventually moved to Yekaterinburg after the Bolsheviks had ruled the majority of Russia. So the girls were instructed to sew the jewels that they had into their clothing because the Bolsheviks were stealing everything that they had. And their mother was a smart cookie and she called the jewels medicines. And she would say, take your medicine or something along those lines. And the girls would sew the jewels into their clothing. So that way the Bolsheviks couldn't find them. The girls still tried to have fun when they were on house arrest and they would put on little plays for their parents. And the guards even noted that Anastasia was very funny and charming but they found her provocative comments very odd because apparently she had those. The house arrest was kind of like an odd time for Anastasia. There was a story that she opened a window to get fresh air and she was actually shot at and never opened a window ever again. I wouldn't either. They were very religious and during a church service one time, the royal family actually dropped to their knees in prayer for the dead. That had happened. That had happened. What am I saying? The girls actually helped the servants cook the food and clean and they actually ended up befriending the servants. I don't know if these were like Bolshevik servants or if these were their original servants. I have no idea. So during the Russian Revolution, they were the reds who were the bolsheviks and then there were the whites who were not bolsheviks but they weren't with the royal family either it's kind of like a three-sided war the whites ended up going to ukaterinburg and that was when the royal family had apparently been missing and it was assumed that they were all murdered by the reds on july 17th of 1918 it was reported that the royal family was woken up and told to go downstairs into the basement the bolshevik guards were led by yakov yarovsky and the scenario was reported to have gone a little bit like yakov saying you are being executed and Nicholas said what turned to his family and then was shot in the chest. The guards then opened fire on the family and the servants that were also there and it was reported that the only survivor was a maid who was then stabbed to death after the fact and she died defending herself with a pillow full of jewels. So the way that the guns were back then they produced a lot of smoke whenever they were shot and it was reported that once the smoke cleared that they had found that some of the bullets had ricocheted off of the jewels in the girls corsets and that Maria and Anastasia were actually alive in a corner of the basement but they were stabbed afterwards. There was rumors of Anastasia's escape after only Nicholas and his wife and their three oldest daughters bodies were found in a mass grave and no one had any idea where Anastasia's body was or Alexei's. But Alexei was kind of like a sick boy so they weren't really concerned about him. I don't know why because I feel like he's the heir so they should be more concerned about him but I guess not. And during the time after 
Anastasia's body wasn't found, and this was public knowledge, over 10 women had claimed to be Anastasia. From 1920 to 1922, Anna Anderson had publicly come forward to claim that she was the missing Grand Duchess. She claimed that after the shooting, she had played dead beneath the pile of bodies of her family, and that a guard had took pity on her and helped her escape. All the way from 1938 to 1970, Anna Anderson actually tried to file with German authorities for recognition as being Anastasia Romanoff, but the court decided that she hadn't had enough evidence to say that she was the Grand Duchess, so they were like, you can't do that. You can't just claim you're somebody. It's kind of like identity theft. People claim that there are dead people all the time now. Anna ended up dying in 1984, and her DNA was run with Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, who was Alexandra Anastasia's mom's grand nephew and it was concluded after her death that she was not biologically related to these people and she was a liar shocking two women had actually come forward and claimed to be both anastasia and maria what is the hair doing and they had escaped to the Ural Mountains in 1919 where they were taken in by a priest and they lived as nuns until their death in 1964 but it was ended up that they were actually not Anastasia or Maria, and that they that the true identities were Nadezda Valiseva and Eugenia Smith. Kind of like an odd pairing, but okay. The idea that Anastasia survived was supported by the rumors that Bolsheviks were actually going house to house asking for Anastasia Romanoff, and this would lead people to think that they knew that she was alive and they were looking for her as a result. But I kind of feel like maybe like head people up high got word that Anastasia survived. It was just rumors, but they were just like, no survivors, and they were just like, go hunt her down. Regardless of if she was actually killed or not, because I feel like they were kind of thinking better safe than sorry, unfortunately. P Princess Helena Petrovna of Russia was imprisoned in Perm in 1918, and she claimed that at some point a guard came in with a little girl and asked if this was Anastasia, but she hadn't seen Anastasia in years and she couldn't remember what she looked like, so she said that she couldn't remember and the girl was taken away. It was also reported that Anastasia and her sisters and her mother were actually reported to be seen in Perm after the murders, but this was not credible. Before Russia had signed a peace treaty with Germany, the Germans had actually demanded the royal family's safe return because they had German blood, but it was reported the Bolsheviks said that they had just been moved and they were not murdered, but that they were still in prison. And I think that was more or less to protect them from being attacked by Germany. So like the idea of like the Bolsheviks just lying and saying that they were moved instead of executed was a supporting factor for the people who thought that Anastasia actually did survive because they weren't admitting that they executed them. Eight witnesses saw a girl escaping at a railway station. They assumed that she was escaping in September of 1918 in Perm, and when authorities came around and showed the eight witnesses a picture of Anastasia, all eight of them said that that was the girl that they saw. I don't know what Perm is, I guess I should look that up, but I don't think that like, it would have been like the same thing. Maybe, I can't imagine they were just like looking for attention if they're in Perm. Where's Perm? Whatever. Chris Putin had a greedy son-in-law named Boris, and Boris would basically take people who look like the royal family and ask for handouts to get them to help them escape to China in order to make money. So he is filthy. It was reported that after the execution that the bodies were actually left for a long amount of time unsupervised, and that the guards that did end up going to look at them or staying with them were guards that did not participate in the execution and were sympathetic towards the family. I don't know if this is supported by anything, but I don't imagine it would make sense at all. Unless it was kind of like, you didn't shoot them, you gotta stay with them now. This is your doing your time while we're gonna go eat lunch. In 1991, the bodies were exhumed at the mass grave and Anastasia and Alexei's bodies were not found. They were ended up taken to the Paul Fortress in 1998. Some people also claim that Maria's body was missing, but I couldn't find anything that backed that up because they thought that the actual missing female body was Maria um, and not Anastasia. And then some scientists had looked at photos of Anastasia and had matched them to the skeletal remains found at the site. But then American scientists came in and they were like, this is not accurate, bud. You got to redo this. And so they kind of like discredited the claims that this was Anastasia. The American scientists looked at the skeletal remains and decided that it was not Anastasia Romanoff because 
She was only 17 at the time and that there was no signs of underdevelopment because I think Maria was 21, I think. It was thought that the Red Russians had actually cremated two bodies to kind of distract from the burial site because if they found two parents and five kids and they would know that that was the royal family, but if they only found five bodies and they know that this couldn't have been the royal family that was seven people. So unfortunately for the mystery of this case, what is my hair doing? So unfortunately in the mystery of this case in 2007, Two bodies were actually found, a boy between the ages of 10 and 13 and a girl between the ages of 18 and 23. And through DNA testing, it was decided that, that these are the bodies of Alexia and either Anastasia or Maria. And this just disproved entirely the idea that she had actually escaped and that she died in 1918 with the rest of her family. Just as like a sad side note, all four girls were wearing an amulet at the time of their death with Rasputin's picture inside of it with a prayer. Disney needs to rewrite that movie because they made Rasputin look like a fool. Anyway, this was the case of Anastasia Romanoff. I hope you liked it. If you didn't, leave it a comment in below. Or if you did like it, like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. Do whatever you want. Anyway, if you have any recommendations for any videos, just leave them in the comments below. If you have any recommendations for food you'd like me to eat, I am vegan, so keep that in mind. Anyway, have a good day. I want you to forget your past lives and find me the new prize. I want your heart to melt like ice in the midst of July.